James Powell, and I am going to show you how to take basswood clapboard and make it look really old and rotten and make it covered with chipped peeling paint. So this is some um, clapboard. It's HO scale. I got it from Matt Mount Albert Scale Lumber. That's uh, Tim Morris's company. And uh, the first thing I do, this is just straight up clapboard. It's not the ra random width clapboard. Uh, fine scale miniatures uh, used to have in their kits but what I do is I go in and uh, let's see if you can get really close in here I take and of course I got to use an optimizer because I can't see uh, I take my exacto knife and I go underneath random clapboards and I just slit them slightly all that does is raise the clapboard from the one below it and just makes kind of a nice separation line. Now, I don't have to do this to all of them, but I do it to a lot of them, especially if there's a big field of clapboard like there is here without any windows or doors. Now, the next thing I do after I go through and do a bunch of these is you might be able to see they have a little bit of wood left over here. I'll take my X-Acto knife and I'll slice off that little bit of extra wood and it'll just peel right off. So we have some clapboards here. Now, a lot of people, they like to take, they'll slice their clapboards like this. They'll raise them up from the one below. They'll take their X-Acto knife and peel up part of the clapboard, almost bending it up, which is fine. You, you could totally do that. I do that um, occasionally. And then people will also do like uh, nail holes. Well, one thing about the nail holes, if you're gonna do clabbered and you wanna peel some pieces of clabbered up, you wanna make sure that the seams where the clabbards came together look like they were at a stud. So you want that to be where the nail holes would be. So let's say this is HO scale and we're gonna have a stud every 16 inches or 24 inches. So let's go like every, oh, I don't know, every 3 16 of an inch or every eighth inch somewhere in there. I'm gonna put a little lifted up clabbered here. So I'm just gonna make a split. This would be on what would be a stud. So if I had nail holes, they'd be running down that same line. I get in there and I lift up the clabbered like this, right there. And I'll just pop it up a little bit. I don't wanna do a ton of these unless this building's ready to fall down. It just gives the wall a little bit of character. Any craftsman modelers out there know this technique. I mean, it's been done for years. So, so peel in here, I'm gonna pop up some more. I'm gonna take in, uh, make a make a clabber that looks like it's kind of, uh, oh, it's been kind of broken and falling apart. So I got this little thing, can you see it on the camera here? Where I'll go in and I'll make almost like two two little hills, a cut and then I'll pop that piece out. And that's kind of like where the clabbered has either broken off, fallen away, come apart. Maybe the wood's rotten there. I'll do another one here. This time we'll do one little hill. It's pretty excessive, but all right. And then we'll do another... Uh, maybe another seam where the clabbards come together and I kind of want to keep them even where the stud would be. So I did this one right below the last one, about, I don't know, 10 courses down or so. I'm gonna peel up. Now, see all that broke there? That's okay. I could just pull that back, no big deal. And then uh, maybe we come down another couple more and we lift up the clabbard the other direction now here's something else I do, is maybe I'll cut off a little bit of that clabbered at the top and I'll actually pull it down. Now that one broke out, so we'll, let's do it again. That one will look cool. We'll move over, let's say there's, this here would be like, uh, let's say 16 inches, another 16 inches, I'm just guessing. But let's say over here we want a stud. So we're about four studs over, three studs over from that one. We're gonna put a seam like we did there, and then we're gonna pull it over. And I wanna take this piece of clabbered, 
and I'm gonna pull it down like it's actually came off the studs. The nails have rotted and the clabbert is going to fall down a little bit. So you can see there, it's actually pulled out of where it was and it's gotta drop down a little bit. So the bottoms of the clabbers are not even. Uh, that somewhat simulates the uneven clabbers uh, that you see on uh, some of the companies that make the uneven scale clabbers. I have, uh, let's see, I have an example really quick. And we're gonna stay there on that. Let's see, if you look at this, this is uneven clabbered. These are actually different distances, like a scale four, scale three inches wide, scale five inches wide. Um, these are random clabbards. Come over here, you can see it here. I have uh, rusty lines where the studs would be. Um, you can see where I've broken out some pieces there. All right, so this, I'm gonna still paint some of this one, but you get the idea, we're gonna get the wood to look like that, so. All right, so here, I'm not gonna do this whole board. We'll add a couple more little breaks along where studs would be. There we go. So we pop over eh, about a scale two feet or so. You pull up that guy, come here. I love my building super weathered and distressed. So I kind of go overboard with this, but you can do it as much or as little as you want. Okay, so let's say the top piece of this, we're gonna cut off the bottom piece here, let's do this. So we're going to slice off the bottom part of this wall. So there we go, that's about a, let's say a scale uh, one story wall, maybe a little bit more than a story. Um, maybe we'll come over here and put another broken piece. There we go. All right. So once we do that, the next thing I do is I've been using this stuff from Builders in Scale. It's called Silverwood Stain and it is amazing. This is the best stain I've found personally. I know a lot of people are using this uh, Hunter Line stain, which is pretty good. But uh, this stuff here is, it's, it's amazing. Uh, they have silver wood, blue wood, red wood, and dead wood. I'm using, I'm gonna use the silver wood and the dead wood. I also have the blue wood stain, which I like a lot. Um, so this, this is pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna soak this board. And as these boards, that is one of my chipping brushes. Let me see if I can find another brush. There we go. Um, as this stuff dries, it silvers out the wood. And the more layers you put, the more realistic it becomes. And it just looks like silvered out old grade wood. Now, there's a couple things I do because I don't want all the boards to look exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna wet it. And I guess, you know, since 99% alcohol, and this contains alcohol, is really hard to get now. He doesn't have much of this in stock. So I probably should order some more pretty soon. Anyway, so there's one layer. What I'm gonna do really quick with this is I'm going to put it under the hair dryer to dry it out and then we're gonna throw another layer on it. Because it's got alcohol in it, it dries super quickly. All right, so we're gonna put another layer and like I say, the more layers you put, and that really is a secret to weathering layers. Layers, 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 layers. Always, the more layers you put, the lighter you put things on, the better it's going to look. So, put a bunch of layers on here. All right, 
So there's two layers. You can see what the wood looked like to start with and how it's starting to silver out. So we're gonna hit it with the hair dryer again. All right, so now let's see. What do we wanna do? All these pieces, they're all kinda starting to gray out and silver out. Now this still isn't dry. This stuff will dry and be silver. It's still a little damp. You can feel it when you touch it. What I have is I have, this is, you can't really tell because it's so dirty, but this is raw umber pan pastels. So this is uh, number 780.5 raw umber by pan pastel. And I'm gonna use this to vary up the color of some of the boards. So maybe I'll find one of those split boards there. And I'll just lightly go over that board with the pan pastel. When this dries out, it's gonna make it, it's gonna be lighter than this. Uh, but what it's going to do is it's gonna put a little tack to that board. So when I put the next colors on it, it's gonna pick up more of the silver. It's gonna pick up, when I put dead wood on here, it's gonna pick up more of that. It's just gonna vary the coloration of the board. Uh, a technique we're doing right now, once, once you put all these colors on here, you don't have to paint it. You don't have to do anything else to it. But we're gonna put chipping solution on here and we're gonna make it look like an old chipping wall, old clabbered wall. So right now, I'm uh, putting some more silver wood on here. Just like this. Throwing a little bit of silver wood on there. Washing over the areas where I put the pan pastel. All right, so. There we go. So we have, what, three, four layers of silver wood on there. I'm going to put the silver wood away. And then we're going to go to our uh, <laughs> stain that is just crazy good. It's called dead wood. And that's also builders and scale dead wood. This has got kind of a yellowish, green, orange, nasty, dirty, old oil kind of tint to it. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put this in some of the holes. All right, where maybe the, the wood has been rotten away for a while. I'm also going to put it on a couple of the clapboards. And I'm going to put it on the edges of the wood. I'm just going to let it soak in on these edges of the wood. Um, I'm also going to run it at the bottom of the wall. So if there was a foundation down here and it got really wet, this is going to help simulate how the wall would uh, grow some mold in it uh, or on it, mold, mildew, whatever. Um, this, this yellow will dry out and it'll turn more of a, a little bit of a brown, but it also gives a little bit of a rust color. So we're going to move that on a couple of the boards. All right, look at that. So look at the difference between the clean board and the weathered board. Now we're going to dry this again with the hair dryer. I don't use much of this dead wood. You don't, you don't really have to. After we uh, paint this with the paint, it'll, we'll use it one more time and it'll look really good. All right, so we're gonna dry this out again. And the wet sheen will come off pretty quickly, but it's still not dry. You really gotta dry this board out to get the silver color showing. You can see now where the boards are lifted up. I kind of put on some of that uh, pan pastel raw umber and the edges of the boards where the yellow is. It's really starting to, to show up there as it dries out. So we're going to run this on here for about uh, another two or three minutes. And uh, we're going to speed this part up. All right, so we dried this out for a couple minutes. There's a couple more things I want to do. If I'm going to use this just as a plain wall that uh, isn't painted, there's a couple other things I want to show you. Um, I love this India ink. This is uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's, I think Dr. Phil Martin's Bombay Sepia India ink. So I've taken this, I mixed this up with some 99% alcohol, and I mixed it up in this little can here. This has got a neat little, once again, it's almost like the dead wood. It's got a little bit more green in it. So it's got a really cool kind of green 
a sepia color to it, brown. Put it in different areas down at the bottom, of course. Um, once again, the areas where there's little breaks. And it can kind of be random. You can put it on different boards if you want, you know, here and there. It'll bleed out, don't worry about that. Throw in a couple boards with that sepia. So that, that works really good. Now here's, here's another secret that I use. Um, I'm gonna use a really, really high concentration of, and this stuff's dark. I'm using just, this is your standard black India ink and alcohol wash, but it's really heavy. I wouldn't use it on figures, details, anything like that because it is just above straight black India ink. I got the, the H on there so I know it's heavy or thick. But this technique is one of the coolest things that I, I really think makes some of my wood look really good. If you can zoom really, really close, super tight in here. I'm gonna put a little bit on my brush. I gotta put my Optivizer down to do it. You touch the edges of where you want to make it look really rotten or wet, where the wood's wet all the time. You just touch the edges and you're going to see all of a sudden through capillary action in the surface of the wood. I'm gonna try it again here. You're gonna see the wood pull the ink up into the grain all by itself. The capillaries of the wood are pulling the ink up in there. So you can see that edge really starting to dark up, darken up. Look at that, it's pulling it up. We can go over and put a little bit of black on those edges, just like that. Now this is the bottom of the wall. So once again, we wanna bring some black up into the bottom where the rot would be creeping up in the boards. So check that out, there we go. We're gonna bring that up in there like that. Now you could do this a couple times. The first time that black is gonna, it just goes in the, the capillaries a little bit and it starts uh, fading out. But the second and third time you do it, it gets super dark and it stays there, which is cool. So look at that on, the, on those boards there. It's pulling up underneath the clapboards and giving kind of almost like a, artificial shadow. We're gonna put some down here. Here where it's rotten, we'll throw some in there. Throw some in there. Up under this board. Here, where it's rotten there. You could pull it out too. Maybe if you wanna make look look like a clabbered is lifted up, but you don't really wanna lift it up. Just run your brush up underneath it like that. You know, give a little artificial shadow. We're gonna come up here. Bring this up where this stuff's really got, got wet over time. Really, really rotten. Once again, we're gonna come to this side and we're gonna do the, if you could get really tight in here, we're gonna do the capillary action. You can actually see the ink pulling through the capillaries when you get really close. You see that? It's almost like soda straws. It's pulling it up in to the wood and you can just watch that happen. There we go, look at that. It's pulling it up into the, the seams of the clabbered. So like underneath the clabbered. We're gonna come like this, bring some up here. And you can see where I only put on one layer, it's not super dark, but over here, look how it's much more dark. So we're gonna put on another layer there. Kind of like this. Come in here. We're gonna hit some of these areas now. This looks cool, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, if you want to call this good, that'd be fine. I'd, uh, what I would do, let's do some nail lines really quick. So where the nails would have been placed in the studs, people call them nail holes, we're not gonna do any holes. Uh, Monster Model Works used to make a really cool nail tool. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just paint super, super, ever so slightly stud lines uh, where the ghosts of the studs are 
where the nails have rusted and a little bit of rust has fallen down the face. So this, for this, I'm going to take a really light black Indy ink wash I have. I'm going to use that as my kind of my binder or my medium to paint on some burnt sienna extra dark pan pastels. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my brush. Super, super sharp tip. All right, come in here really close, Mia. Got my daughter Mia filming, as usual. <laughs> All right, so I got, I'm going to come in here. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go really, really lightly. I'm going to pull in what would be a stud line where the nails might have rusted. You want to do it really lightly, but some areas could be a little darker. There's one. A little, little crooked. We'll do another one. We'll go about a scale two feet over. Pull it down. Wow, those are both super crooked. That's okay. If you want to do this well, you can, uh, or good, you can draw a line. But you'll get the idea. So I'm going to pull that down. Come over here really lightly. Okay, wow. Whoever built that used uh, crooked wood. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit more pan pastel on here. Load up my brush a little bit more. But you can see the indie ink's going away. It's leaving a little bit of the pan pastel and it's giving you just a hint of a stud wall. And you don't have to do the whole thing. Now, the areas down below where it's all wet, you might want to make the, the, the rusty uh, nail lines a little bit darker. There we go. Whew. Here's another cut. It's all right. We're going to paint, put paint over top of this. I just wanted to show you how I would do some stud lines. And if you want to use a super little brush, absolutely. Go ahead and do it. And these things don't have to go down all, all the way down a wall. The, the nails aren't, every one's not going to rust. So you can just, just lightly apply that. It's going to fade away. Where you want some darker, go over it a few times. So there we go. So you got uh, really crooked studs, but you get the idea. You got some ghost studs in there. Now, what do we do next? We want to make this wall painted. But James, I want chipped paint on my wall. What do we do? Ha. Here we go. There's two different things you could use, at least that I would use. We got uh, ammo by Ming Jimenez chipping fluid. So this is scratches effects. And then we got uh, ammo by Ming Jimenez heavy chipping fluid. This is going to, if you use this, this is going to make some really, really big chips. Uh, almost too big for HO scale, unless you really don't want much paint on it. So what I want to use is Scratch's effects. This is works much, much better. I, we just got an applause back there. I'm pretty happy about that. That's cool. So here we go. All right, so uh, Scratch's effects. I'm going to rinse out my brush really quick. And um, I'm going to coat this entire wall with Scratch's effects. You don't have to. You could just coat where you wanted to put your paint uh, or where you want to chip your paint. Let's say the top of the wall under an eave, paint's not going to chip nearly as fast as it is where it's out in the sun or where it gets wet all the time. And maybe you don't want to waste your chipping fluid up there and you just want to put it at the bottom. Whatever, however you want to do it, I'm going to coat the entire wall. So what I do is I coat this wall and I, I, I kind of really soak, soak the wall. And then I'll dry it with the hair dryer really quick. And then I'm going to coat it one more time. It's recommended that you coat it twice. Um, okay, so this stuff really... Uh, it, it, this really light, this scratches effect stuff is... It, it, it chips... Your chips don't come off as big. So if you want to make sure that they're going to, you're going to be able to chip off wood or chip off paint, you can, uh, 
do it twice. So what I'm going to do, I've co coated the whole thing here. I'm going to dry it out really quick. All right, so I put uh, two coats of Scratches Effects uh, chipping fluid. It's just not as, uh, it holds onto the material, onto your paint a little bit more than like the heavy chipping effects does. I put two coats on there. So that's drying. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna paint this wall white. Generally, if I wanna do chipping on old wood, I'm gonna, you don't have to, but I'm gonna go with a lighter color, uh, a brighter color. White, the contrast between this and white is really, really good. So it's really easy to see the chips. If you're gonna paint a building brown and chip it, you can, uh, but I would maybe, after you paint it brown, and maybe you would mix some brown with some white and make some faded brown paint and kind of go over it and then chip it, just so you get some contrast. Um, uh, between the wood and your paint. So what I'm going to use, I have an old bottle of uh, Ammo uh, white surface primer. I'm going to use the white primer because I can put a wash over it and it'll accept that wash and, and it'll show up really well. If I just use regular paint, it won't accept um, a wash as, as, as well as uh, if it's just um, primer that already has that uh, that little bit of uh, tack, or uh, it's got a little bit of bite to it. Okay, so I got the white paint. And then when I paint my white paint onto the wood, um, it seems like it's just simple, you just paint it on, but it's not really, because if you put two or th three layers of white paint in one area, once you start chipping, it's gonna show up. Um, so you wanna make it look like, somewhat like how it would be, would be painted in real life, right? Um, kind of paint the same direction that a painter would be painting if they were painting the building. That way you don't get weird brush strokes showing up once you start chipping. Uh, you can, which is kind of nice, is especially with this primer here, uh, you see a lot of it soaking into the wood. Well, you know, in a way, that's kind of what we're doing is we kind of want to get some of the paint a little heavier, some of it a little bit... Uh, uh, lighter and uh, well naturally without chipping it we can uh, uh, just kind of start chipping it without chipping it we just have areas that are have more paint areas that have less paint uh, so what I'm gonna do and by the way you can see my wall is warping because I didn't do anything to the back side really you should put bracing on your walls or paint the front and back so it doesn't warp but you know for the sake of time, I didn't do that. So, so we're painting this. Once again, I'm just going all one direction. When you paint around windows, don't go down and around the windows. Uh, paint down. Try to use a really sharp brush and get in and paint, once again, the same direction a painter would. Yes, he would paint up and down, but that would be really close beside the window. With these big brushes, you're going to end up seeing those those vertical strokes and you don't want to see those. You want to see just nice horizontal strokes. Eh, you can do whatever you want though. If you want to you want to see vertical strokes, hey, go for it. All right, so I'm almost done painting this wall. See, I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything real spectacular here. Even at the bottom, we're going to have all this rusty area. I'm not even going to put a lot of paint on there, if at all. If at all, I don't really need to. So up at the top, which would be kind of the eaves of the building. Maybe I'll put a little bit extra paint. Um, once again, this area is generally gonna be under an eave. It's gonna be kind of protected from the sun, from the elements. So it's not gonna chip usually as fast as the rest of the wall that's more exposed. So we're really gonna get that white there. Um, sometimes there's boards that will hold on to paint more than others. So maybe we'll take a board and we'll make it a little brighter, you know. Add a little bit of extra paint to it. Right here, we're going to add a little bit of extra paint. Here's another board. Maybe this board, this board held paint really good. So we're going to add some extra paint. Do one more maybe. Where's a board that, this guy right here, look at that. 
He, for some reason, for some reason, his grain was different than the other boards, and he held his paint better than the other ones. Here's another one. Okay, so what we're going to do here, I see that little splotchy mark. I don't really like that, so I'm going to just kind of brush that out. I don't mind if it looks like brush strokes. I just don't want to have, like, big dabs, big, big uh, bulbous areas in here. So there we go. Okay, so I'll we'll let that dry really quick. And guess what we're gonna dry it with? Hair dryer. Makes everything go so much faster. All right, so let's look at the difference. Uh, original, unpainted, painted. Personally, I think this looks pretty awesome already. You got this kind of rotten area down here below. You got some chipped up areas there. Um, you see what I was talking about? Like this area right here? Look how ugly that is. I don't like that. So we'll chip that out. Now, here is how we do this. We go about doing this. I am going to take, and I'm going to get a little bit of water. That's all I really need to chip. Paint's dry, it's ready for chipping. Um, I use a couple different things to chip with. I have a brush that's got some really kind of, it's got paint in it, the bristles are kind of stiff. And then I also will take a piece of strip wood like this and I just break the end off. So it's got kind of a rough, uh, almost like splintery end to it. And I use that to chip. Uh, and then when I get done, I use the side of my, or the blade side of my X-Acto knife and I'll, and I'll chip stuff off with that too. So. First, what I'm going to do, and get really zoomed in here, we'll chip away at this area. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our brush and we just we're just going to dampen the wood. We don't have to soak it. We just lightly, ever so lightly, put water on the area we're going to work. We're going to let that water soak into the paint just for a few seconds. You can almost see the the paint. I don't want to say it changes color, but it has a different surface. Other than just being wet, it, it looks like it's absorbed water. And from there, you can take you can take a piece of wood, and you can start seeing chipping happening almost immediately. Look at this. You see that? Paint is coming off. Get really close there. See that paint coming off? Look at that. Now, maybe you want a little bit more. Take the side of your X-Acto knife and get a little bit more control. Come up here. Maybe we want to put a little bit more water on here. Move up higher up the wall. We're not going to go all the way up the wall. Check this out. So we're going to come in here. Only takes a few seconds for the paint to get soaked. And originally this was done with hairspray. Uh, modelers started using hairspray and I'm sure this is a, a similar, 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 similar formula to hairspray. And uh, it just doesn't have any smell to it. It's just putting kind of a, a poly coat onto the wall. Check this out. It's just chipping right off. There we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay, so you see that? Now I'm going to do some over here. See this area right here? I don't like that blotchy area right there. I'm going to take that out. We're going to come up here. As we move down in the wall right here, we'll let the paint absorb there. And we're gonna come down here, and this is where all the paint is kind of already rotten off the wall already. Now see that bulby area? We're gonna take that out. 
I don't like it, so we're going to pull it out. It doesn't look very natural. And we're just going to lightly scratch away just random areas here. You don't want to let the water set too long. Oh, there's that board we pulled down. Look at that. You don't want to let the water set too long um, or it won't pull up anymore. But if you let it sit for like 30 seconds, it'll pull up really nice. All right, so I'm going to get this brush. going to get it damp a little bit. Here's what I'm talking about up at the top. Yes, you can even rub your brush on there and it'll pull up a little bit of the paint. What I don't like about that is if you're using a brush and you rub it on there, some of the white, uh, the chips will get stuck in the paint that's already cleared up and it doesn't, it almost kind of ghosts out your paint. I don't really like that. So um, we're gonna just lightly pull up here and you just barely touch the surface and it'll pull up. See that? Just lightly touch that surface. Here's a part where it's really black and rotten. We'll get that wet and pull that up. Okay, let's see right here. I'll let that soak for a second. Pop that right up, there we go. Pop up some of those areas there. Okay, there you go. Leaves on this. We can do a little bit up there, but not much. Let's see, look at that. All right. So, look at that. I'm really digging that. Can you see that on the camera? How does it look? Good. Looks good. Okay. I pull that up. I'm going to take, and you know, you're going to get a little bit of fiber area, a little bit of fibrous areas popping up, and that's okay. Just kind of wipe them off. And you're going to end up, when you're wiping it off, you're going to pop off some more chips once again. You don't want to scrub into there too much because you're going to end up really driving some of that paint back into the wood. You don't want to do that. Okay, so there we go. So there's that. Now check this out. I'm going to take my heavy ink again. That's really, I mean, that's really all you need to do, okay? Um, you can see the chipping. Some boards are missing uh, paint altogether. Some boards... The paint's a little bit chipped off. Now, if I go back in and I take my heavy ink and my brush, let's try this. We're gonna do that. We're gonna come up in here and we're gonna make those boards a little bit more rotten and we're gonna come in along the sides once again. We're gonna pull in a little bit more right there. There's a little bit more of this ink right now. Oh, look at that. Boom. Rotten. Rotten. There you go. See that? That really pops that out. It looks great. All right. So I'm just going to go up underneath a couple of these boards. There we go. So that's that. There's two more things I do. Um, and I showed you before, and, I, and we're going to do it again really quick. So some of these buildings, the stud, nail, rust, ghost line thing, it, it shows through the paint, you know? Um, so I'm going to take my light alcohol. This is like a, let's say, a, I mean, 5% India ink, if that, mix. I mean, it is thin, thin mix. And I'm going to just lightly pull down where the studs are. I mean, ever so slightly. I'll come down again to this one. Ever so slightly, pull it down. We'll come over to this, where this stud would be. Same thing. Pull it down. Just barely, barely, barely touch it. And I'm touching it probably even a little too much. I'm not looking through my optivizer, so... See, if I'd come over about the same spacing, I'd miss that board, but whatever. I'll do it anyway. It's a little too much there. I'll bring this one up. 
that's it. So I can take my light wash here. And I can actually wash that out a little bit. I think those too much. Just wash them out just a tick. Take off some of that. There we go. Just take off. You can see. There we go. Now you could even, in some of this, if you want to throw in a, uh, a little bit brighter. There we go. We'll thin out. Make that ghost line go a little higher. Um, if you want to put in a brighter orange uh, to get a brighter rust, that'll work too. All right, so we have that. Now what do we do? The last thing that I'm going to do to this, I might... You know, you got your kind of your ghosted studs in there. You got your rotten uh, area at the bottom. This is field green. Uh, it's ammo oil brusher. These things are amazing. So I'm going to put a little tick of field green at the bottom of this. Just in a few spots. I mean, we're talking dots, like pinhead sized dots of ammo oil brusher, field green, and then I have ammo oil brusher olive green. You can see I use this one all the time. Uh, it's, I use it so much it's coming apart. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna put a couple little dots of this olive green at the bottom of this wall. Now, why, you say, am I doing that? So the oil brusher, both the field green and olive green. I'm going to then take my ammo odorless enamel thinner. You can also use mineral spirits. I've used gambling mineral spirits on this and it works pretty well. I'm gonna take my brush and uh, the, the label has worn off. I've used it so much. And I'm going to wet those areas and you can see, as I wet those areas, it starts bleeding little bits of green into the bottom of the wall. Look at that. As I wet that wall, I'm getting that nasty green moss and mildew come up the wall. And that's just from the ammo oil brusher. You could use, these are actually, uh, I believe they're enamels, not oils. Um, but they work like oils and you can come in here and you could use oil paints to do this. The oil brushes just work so well. Um, I love using them. So I'm coming in there like that. And I think maybe I want a little bit more of that bright green up in this area right here. So I'm going to take my olive green again. I'm just going to Tick that area a couple couple extra times. That's a lot. That right there is really going to make it super bright. It's going to be a lot of green, but that's okay. The place I model is supposed to be in the tropics and uh, on another planet. Go figure. Uh, <laughs> and it's very, very wet there. And so all kinds of moss is great. Look at this. This moss is popping up on this wall. And we're just going to lightly wash it over, put it in the areas where the damp mildew is. I know they call this different things in different countries, um, but we're just making that nasty mildewy wall that nobody wants on their house. There we go. So there it is. That That's it. I mean, that is, see if you can get a good zoomed up shot of that. Um, that really is... All it takes to do a weathered, old, nasty, wood-clabbered wall. Now, if you want to go farther than that, you can put signs on it and uh, maybe put some a little bit of rust colors coming out here and there. But uh, that's it. I'll, I'll even go through here and I'll take and put some dust uh, kicked up on the bottom of the wall where, like, rain has hit the mud that's around the building and splashed up on the wall. You could totally do that too. Um, that actually, you can do that with your uh, your um, pan pastel umber, or I like to use uh, uh, the dust colors from Ammo by Mig Jimenez, and you can brush those on there and get get like a, a dusty, dusty color. Now, when this this brown dries, this uh, raw umber dries, it'll 
and it'll kind of put a, a little bit lighter, almost like a dusty color in it. So um, that's it. That's it. I hope you like that wall. Um, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. A lot of people would ask how I do that. That's how I do it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we got uh, builders and scale stains. We have uh, some alcohol and India ink washes and a bunch of ammo by Ben Jimenez products. So thanks for joining and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.